Hello, my name is Paul Miners and welcome back to another one of our Asana training videos. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I shared a video where I shared my five favorite features inside of Pipedrive. And today I wanted to do the same thing for Asana. So what you're going to see are the five features or parts of Asana that we as a team get the most value from and just the parts of Asana that I enjoy the most. Now, if you have any questions at the end of this video, or if you want to share your favorite features in Asana, then leave me a comment below. And if you would like one-on-one -on -one help with setting up or optimizing Asana for your business, maybe you want some training to improve the adoption within your team, then click the link in the description below to book a complimentary introductory call with our team to learn more about our Asana support and consulting options. Now, my first favorite feature in Asana that we use dozens of times a day is the ability to comment inside of tasks. Now, to somebody already using Asana, this might seem quite obvious, but if you're new to Asana, you may not realize that actually you can comment on tasks. And when you and your team fully adopt Asana, as we've done, Asana can become your team's primary tool for communication. Now, to clarify what I mean here, we still use email, of course, to communicate with our clients and external stakeholders. But internally, as a team at Minaco, if I am following up with my team about something, if I'm asking them to do something or just checking in, we do all of that communication through Asana, primarily through the comments inside of tasks. We don't use email to communicate internally. We don't use Slack. We don't use Microsoft Teams. And the benefit of keeping your conversations inside of tasks is that when somebody sits down and they open their task that's on their task list, they can see all the communication in one place. For example, here's a task that is assigned to Warwick. He's working on this Zapier update. He's got the task description in front of him. Uh, the collaborators have been added down here. So these are people who are almost like CC'd on the task. So Faith, Lindsay, myself, we're gonna get updated when this task is updated or changed. And here inside the comments, we can see the back and forth. So when Warwick sits down to work on this, he doesn't have to go and open Microsoft Teams or Slack and scroll through some long message thread to find what we talked about. The conversation related to the work is right there inside the task. And I've said this in previous videos, but communicating in Asana really makes your conversations much more task centric. Where tools like email, Slack, Microsoft Teams generally prioritize recency, and you're generally seeing the most recent messages first, each task in Asana is sort of like its own thread or forum. So I can click on this task and there's a separate conversation. I can go to this one, different conversation. And so rather than prioritizing recency, you're always reminded about what is the piece of work or unit of, uh, what is the task that we're trying to move forward? Now, a couple of things we do in here to improve our communication back and forth. Firstly, I will always like someone's comment as a way to show them that I've seen it. So rather than having to reply, I can just click the like button and that way they know I've seen it. And what this looks like for the person receiving the like is when they go to their inbox, which is where you receive all your notifications for updates in Asana, you would get a notification like this. So I can see here that Faith has liked my comment. Great, so I, I know that she's seen it. I know that she's happy with it. I don't need to follow up and say, hey, did you see it? Are you gonna do it? Just using that like button back and forth keeps us all in the loop. So that's my first favorite feature of Asana. It's a bit of a simple one, but by using comments in Asana and by fully adopting Asana for our team's internal communication, we are so much more efficient and productive as a team because we are always keeping our conversations on track, we make decisions quicker, and we're not switching between multiple tools. My second favorite feature of Asana, and again, this is something I've talked about in numerous videos now, is the ability to create task templates. So when you come to a project like our content calendar here, if I click on the customize menu and come down to templates, and this does require a paid Asana subscription, you can create task templates. So we use this for things like planning this videos like this that you're watching. So here's a template for planning an Asana video with all of the subtasks that we need to complete. And inside these subtasks, I even have notes on how to complete that specific subtask. So when uploading our uh, WordPress blog post, these are the steps to follow. Uh, here's the draft newsletter template that we add to our mailing service in ConvertKit. And so I can use this template 
if I create a new task, I can pick my template. I'm going to give my task a name. So we'll just say how to use Asana 101 guide, whatever. And then Asana is going to create the uh, subtasks that I've input. It's going to fill in tags and custom fields that I've defined. And there we go. There's all the subtasks created with all of the notes and everything ready to go. I can then go in and you know fill in any gaps. And so I really like this, number one, because it's a massive time saver. I don't have to create the checklist of subtasks every time and copy in all these notes. It's just set up once inside Asana and I can rinse and repeat and use the same template every single time. The other major benefit of using task templates, and I talked about this in a video about how we store our standard operating procedures or SOPs in Asana, and I'll, and I'll link that up here. This is a great way to build consistency into your work. So by using these templates, my team follow the same process every single time. We don't miss an important step. And it actually makes training and onboarding new team members much easier because they can just read the task template and the description and away they go. We use task templates for things like planning content. So we have different templates for different types of videos, sending newsletters, running webinars, or doing blog posts and podcasts. If I go to our operations project, we have templates for things like um, hiring a VA, onboarding a new contractor to our team, troubleshooting zaps. And in our sales project, we have templates for things like creating or updating lessons in our video courses or running sponsor campaigns, uh, setting up zaps and course access for our clients. So anytime you find yourself needing to do the same task and follow the same checklist again and again, and let's face it, that's actually often quite a lot of the work that we're doing is things that we've done before and we just need to follow the same process to make sure we're consistent. That is an opportunity to use a task template in Asana. Okay, number three, my next favorite feature of Asana. And again, this is a feature I've talked about many times. So if you've watched my YouTube videos before, you've probably heard me talk about this already, but it is the My Tasks page. I talk about this a lot because number one, it's very useful for me personally. And also when we work with clients and we're helping them with Asana, we find time and time again that people usually aren't using their My Tasks correctly. So the My Tasks page, as it sounds like, is essentially a page that shows you all of my tasks or your tasks. Anything that is assigned to you, so anything with your name on it, it could be a subtask like this. So you can see down here this video I'm recording right now, this subtask is assigned to me. Or it could be a parent task assigned to me. Anything assigned to me is going to show up on this my tasks page. And I like this page because it keeps me really focused. Rather than having to click through all of these projects and go and find my work, it's much more efficient when I open up Asana first thing in the morning to go straight to the My Tasks page and I can see what do I have due today. And I use some rules to automatically move my tasks into these various sections. So I have a rule, for example, when a task is the start date is approaching and is starting today, or if the due date is today, Asana automatically moves the task into that today section. So that is how I can just open up Asana in the morning. Asana has rearranged my tasks overnight and I can see what's due today. Or I have this one tied to my upcoming section when a task is uh, the start date is approaching and is one week before or the due date is one week before. Again, Asana moves that to the upcoming section. So I can just log in. Asana's moved everything around. And as long as I've got dates on my tasks, I can see very clearly what I need to do. And if you want to check out a little bit more how to manage your My Tasks, I'm going to link up here another video that I made about a year ago now showing how to organize your My Tasks. We hear from clients all the time who say things like, you know, my team hasn't really, they're not really using Asana that well, they're missing deadlines or just tasks aren't getting done. And we find this is often the result of people not using the My Tasks page. Either they don't know how to use it or they don't even know that it exists. And instead they're going into their projects to go and find their work. And so using this My Tasks page actually helps you to see everything you need to do. And it is the best way to make sure that you complete your tasks on time and projects aren't being delayed. Delayed. Number four, my next favorite feature of Asana is the ability to create custom fields inside your projects. So again, if we go to a project and we navigate to the customize menu, if we go to fields here, this is where we can add fields to store attributes and details inside of a task. 
A field could be a drop down menu like this with a list of options that you can pick from. It could be a text field where you can just type in any text you want. Or it could be a numerical field for tracking things like costs. So for example, here is how we use fields inside of our client's project. At the top here, we've got fields for tracking the estimated and actual time. So for us, when a client books their call, call with us, maybe they book an hour, we can see we've got an hour of scheduled work. We then track our time on subtasks and this updates the actual time on the parent task so we can see how much time have we spent working with that client. We have fields for budgeted time, so how many hours have they paid for? What's the status of this client that we're working with? What's the value? What have they paid? What's the cost related to the contractors working with the client? And what type of client is this? Now, the main reason I've chosen to highlight custom fields as one of our favorite features is when you use custom fields in Asana, it helps you to unlock other areas of Asana. For instance, one of the things we do with these fields is we trigger rules. So again, if I go back to my customize menu and go to rules, we have rules like this. So when we change the status of a client to waiting on client, so that's one of our custom fields, we create a subtask to follow up with the client in seven days. So just a really nice quick little reminder, follow up with them because we're waiting with them, waiting for them. Or we have rules like this. When, the, uh, when we've scheduled the client, we create a subtask to update the client on the ETA. Or uh, here's another one. When we change the support, uh, the status to support period, we create a subtask and we complete the main parent task. So that's sort of a whole feature rules within Asana that is now accessible and more useful to us by leveraging those custom fields. Another way I can leverage custom fields is in reporting. So if I come to this reporting area here, here's an example of a dashboard that I've built and in this report, you can see on my X axis, I've put the custom field for our client status. So I can see how many of each clients do we have in the queue, in progress, waiting, and so on at any one time. Or I could do reports like this, where I can track things like the time that we've spent working on different clients. And I can see who's, at, who's tracking the most time uh, on my team. So this is a lot of useful, valuable data that helps me understand where is our work right now? How much time are we spending on these tasks that is all um, made possible by using those custom fields in our account? And the fifth and final favorite feature that I wanted to highlight today, and you've seen this a little bit already in this video, is using rules. This is really where we can start to automate and systemize our work and really develop processes that keep us on track. For instance, here I am back in the client's project. We have rules for things like when we create a new task in this project or we have a new client, we post a comment. So myself and Lindsay on my team get notified. Uh, we add relevant collaborators to that task. When uh, I've, sh I've shown you some of the rules, so for example, when we update the status of the client, that creates subtasks for us. Uh, we also do things like when the task is complete, it creates a subtask for um, Lindsay on my team to update Data, uh, our costs in Pipedrive. We also use rules in our content project. So I've got rules for things like uh, when I add a due date to a task, we move the task to the scheduled section and we set the status to planned. Or if I do the opposite, if I remove a due date, I move it back to a different section and I change the status again. And again, on the My Tasks page, I have those rules to move my tasks into today or upcoming based on when they are due. As you can probably tell watching this video, I'm a very systems and processes orientated person. I love thinking about how can I standardize and make the processes in the business more efficient. And I do that using things like task templates, as I showed you, and rules. So my team don't have to think about what are we doing next or how do I update the task? We have those processes, we have those checklists, we have those updates and rules built into the system. This makes Asana easier to use and easier to adopt because as the business owner or the chief Asana officer on our team, I set up these systems and my team just have to use Asana and the system almost actually just tells them what to do. And I think this all translates into making your business more efficient and easier to grow and scale. 
So those are my five favorite features in Asana. Let me know if you think I missed anything really cool. Post a comment below. Let me know what your favorite features are. And one more time, if you need help with Asana, getting more out of this really powerful tool or improving the adoption within your team, then click the link in the description below to book a complimentary introductory call with us. One more time, thank you very much for listening and I will see you in the next video.